Maybe this camper looks good from far, but it is far from good. This painting has turned out pretty horrible. I thought it was going to be a pretty simple process. I thought that it would be the most bang for my buck. It would add to the looks of the camper. And I thought that it was going to be, uh, not, it wouldn't take me that long. It has ended up taking me quite some time. I actually started the project in my driveway at home. And now I, in the meantime, I've brought the camper up north. You can tell I'm up north because of the massive amounts of mosquitoes that are everywhere. Maybe uh, through this video, I can give some advice to you to save you some time or some headaches. Or maybe you could give me some advice on how to fix my issues here. I think we're past the point to where this weather stripping adds to the aesthetics of the camper. And I don't really feel that it does anything to protect these screw heads at all anymore. In fact, I think that it could actually make things worse where the water gets trapped behind the weather stripping. So I'm going to take them all off from all the windows or what's left on all the windows. I'll probably end up spraying those screws with some flex seal or some some sort of sealant to keep them from, from rusting out. a little bit taller. I found that a paint stripper disc on the drill worked best to smooth out the peeling vinyl decals. It also etched the aluminum and helped remove stuck on gunk. There were plenty of things to take off the camper that weren't needed. There's four of these levels around the camper that I'm going to take off. They're probably pretty handy for some people when they're parking the camper, but I just don't think that they're necessary for us. Right now they're just creating, well, eight extra holes in the camper and eight extra spots for water to come in. So I'll get rid of those and keep on with our paint prep, which is, which is getting kind of old. That's why you have to recruit helpers. I would say there was probably some water getting in there. Totally cracked up on the top here. Really never liked these lights and how they added another spot for water to get in too. Really hard to keep them perfect.
Now the goal with this painting project is to have it look better than what it does now. The good news is I don't I don't really have to try to make it look better than what it is now. And I'm pretty much done with uh, prep work. Uh, that, that's just not so much fun. Neither is painting. But I do have a couple different cans. I have Flex Seal Liquid. That I'm going to paint on the corners here. Now in the corners there was caulk that I, I took out. And really there's not much of a seam there. So there's I think that this Flex Seal is going to fill the gap really well. Also to get the Flex, Flex Seal Spray that I might use in some areas. And then I got textured, um, this black, what you put in truck beds, coating. Hopefully that sticks all right. I'm not 100% sure on how I'm going to, like, what it's going to end up looking like. But I do know that I want the, the lower part of this to be painted black. So basically from the stripe down, I want painted black. Another can that I have. I don't, I don't drink much, but I, every time I paint, I drink. This will be my first time using this Flex Seal um, paint. Curious to see how it goes on. My idea is that I'm going to use it on all the corners and then around the windows. Basically, that's just my lazy way of not having to tape up the windows. Well, I survey the city streets with cars and all its peace. So if anyone's ever used that brush on Flex Seal, they probably they probably knew when I was putting this on that it wasn't mixed correctly. I end up mixing it a little bit more, and then I spread it out, and it and it turned out it turned out like shit, but it does its job. It it seals up the areas. I think it will like cover up this uh, decal area where I'll be able to paint over the top of it easy enough. The bed liner did not spray well. It didn't stick well to the aluminum or to the flex seal areas. Plus a can didn't go very far, so it didn't seem very economical. So I decided to just brush on regular Rust-Oleum.
Unfortunately, the brush on paint didn't go super well either. For every stroke of paint that I put on, it seemed I brushed just as much off. It took many coats, but eventually the bottom black portion was complete and it looked fairly decent. I should have realized at this time that the paint was not sticking at all to the flex seal. But I didn't really notice because the paint was black and the flex seal was black. Unfortunately, I moved on to painting the top area of the camper and I decided to go with a gray paint. It became real clear that the paint was not sticking at all to the flex seal. I kept at it thinking that with multiple coats, the paint would eventually cover. Looking like, ah, never mind. I was going to say that the spray paint was doing better over the flex seal, but it still beats up on the flex seal, too. For some reason, this gray doesn't quite look the same either. It's supposed to be the Rust Oleum gray. I convinced myself that the gray would cover, and I even took time to complete more of the fine details. Maybe I didn't wait long enough in between coats for the paint to dry, or maybe I should have used a silicone solvent over the flex seal to have the paint stick better. But either way, the gray was not covering up the white flex seal. So at this time, I decided to clean up the gray paint and start over with white. I did not record the process of cleaning up the gray paint or of repainting it white, because I just wanted the project to be over with. Now the camper turned out all right, and it is much better than what it was before, but if you look close, you can see the imperfections. 
I think I would have had less imperfections had I just caulked around the windows or the corners or if I would have just bought a paint sprayer. But I wanted to save money and I wanted to save time by not taping the windows. Well, it turns out I probably should have covered the windows either way. But a razor blade does work well to remove paint stuck to glass. This pretty much wraps up the entire camper restoration project and it's just in time for the camping season. The paint and the flex seal added about $100 to the renovation and if you add that to the $500 that I spent for the rest of the remodel so far plus the $590 that I used to purchase the camper it brings me to right around $1200 so not too bad. I'm happy if you've been enjoying these somewhat slow paced camper renovation videos and just for a teaser I do have another one to finish up so stay tuned.